So you have to look, you have to practice on a daily basis. See? And um, little by little, see, things will sort out. Problems will be solved. Guilts and issues that you've been struggling with will just let you go. And then you'll begin to see. Sure, you'll have to see some of your own wrong too. Of course, you'll see that. That's painful, but hey, you know you're wrong anyway, don't you? You know you've been resentful and judgmental and so forth, so it's, it's, not, it's not like you haven't really... It's not like it's something new that you didn't really know, but you just haven't been sorry. Though maybe you've been wanting to be sorry for a long time. Maybe you have. You wanted to be sorry for a long time. And the opportunity never presented itself, but then when you encounter someone like me, well, now here's the opportunity to be sorry. Not to me, not to other people, but in your heart. Before, the, before God's light of truth, a real presence, that when it is near, then you see you're wrong, and then it makes you sorry. It makes you sad to see you're wrong, and then you also realize your helplessness. But now instead of resenting the truth, resenting God's light, resenting your helplessness, see? You just bear the little bit of pain, and then you know what? Then very soon it's gone. The joy, see, it's like a big relief. It's a big, it's such a relief. And then joy returns. See? And the sun is shining and the birds are singing. And you go about your life with, uh, it's beautiful. And then maybe the next day you see something else. Okay? Oh my God, I've been resenting my co-worker. I didn't realize that I resented her. I thought I liked her. I thought I was doing all these things for her because, see, now you see it. Oh my God, you say, well, okay, so now you see it. That's all. So that's all it is. You see how simple it is? It's just the process of every day, every morning, first thing, centering yourself, then going out in the world and being a mom, dad, worker, doing all the things you do, exercise and work, and everything. But as the day proceeds, you have little insights. You see things, little, little things that you, errors that you make that you don't even realize it, see? And then you also begin to realize some shining truths. You see how other people are lost and, and they can't help themselves. So it makes it easy to forgive them. You see how your parents were lost. See, nobody had love for them. Nobody taught them. They didn't have what you're watching now. See, they didn't have that. So they were lost. So it was that way you can forgive them. See? And then you begin to also get little, begin to see a little bit about maybe about who, about God, and about Jesus, who he was, who he is, see? And you begin to know that there's something beautiful, something innocent, something pure, something good, okay? And in the past you avoided it because you didn't want to be wrong. You didn't want to feel shame. But there's nothing wrong with feeling shame before what is truly good. You know, there was a movie, I'll never forget now I'm going to end with this. I wanted this to be a short video and it's getting long. A long time ago, I think back in the 1930s, they made the original movie Robin Hood. If you ever have a chance to, to see it, you really should because they've, color, they've colorized it so it's not in black and white anymore. It, was, it started, starred Errol Flynn, who was a handsome, dashing Hollywood actor, and Olivia de Havilland, a beautiful... Hollywood actress. It was Robin Hood, the original Robin Hood. And it's very good. You'll love it. Robin, Robin Hood had a free spirit. See? And he thumbed his nose at authority. Especially rotten authorities, of which there are plenty in the world, aren't there? Rotten authorities. That's part of the reason why you're so messed up. So he thumbed his nose at the Sheriff of Nottingham, who was a bad person, this sheriff. And, of course, the sheriff of Nottingham hated it because Robin Hood, she didn't have any respect for him, and Robin Hood was in um, free, and the sheriff didn't like that. But anyway, because the good king was gone, and while the good king was gone, all these rotten nobles and rotten uh, uh, sheriff and so on, they were up to no good, and Robin Hood saw it. Well, Robin Hood 
had no respect for them whatsoever. Zero respect. And he made no bones about them knowing it. But toward the end of the movie, the, the good king, who had been away on a, a crusade, I think, came back to England. And the good king disguised himself as a monk. So he wore kind of a brown, uh, plain brown uh, clothing with a hood so that no one would know that he was the king. And so he could go around and find out what was happening in his kingdom before he made his move to correct things. He wanted to find out what was going on. So at a certain point, he encountered uh, Robin Hood. And I can't remember the circumstances now. But Robin Hood was had, had a noble spirit, a good spirit. And the king saw that. And the king took his, um, hood, his hood off and revealed him and, and opened up his, uh, you know, brown monk's clothing. And underneath was his regal kingly garb. And Robin Hood recognized him as the good king. And Robin Hood got down on one knee and said, my, my king, my lord. See? So Robin Hood would, would bow his knee for no rotten authority. But when the good authority came, then Robin Hood bent his knee for the good authority, you see. Because he loved what was good. That's why he, that's why he didn't like the rotten sheriff, because the rotten sheriff was bad, was evil and bad. But the good king was good, and he respected the good king. So all of this is to say, when you discover that there is truth, and there is good, see, and there is something pure and innocent and noble, and something that doesn't hate you, and it doesn't judge you, see, it just wants you to be better. It wants you to see you're wrong so that you could be better, but it doesn't judge you. When you see that, then to humble, then to, to, to humble yourself before it, See, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. See, then you can be like Robin Hood or like George Washington. In, re in real life, George Washington was a, was a noble man who stood tall. See? But he was on his knees before God. On his knees before God, but he stood tall before men. Okay? My name is Roland.